Who knew a non-combat mech game about farming and exploring could be so much fun? Welcome to the channel friends, I'm Kenator and of course we are reviewing Lightyear Frontier which just launched into early access. The game starts you off with unfortunately crash landing on this planet, but you manage to make it down alive with your mech in nearly one piece. The island you have landed on is lush, green and full of life, with both fauna and flora. But you are not alone, the friendly Piper satellite in orbit welcomes you warmly and keeps you company through your journey, assisting you in both exploration and general encouragement just in case you fall over and nearly scratch your mech's paintwork. After a short stint of collecting your tools, you're ready to put down roots and get to farming just like you came here to do. To do this, you're going to require resources, and through your various tools, you can collect things like wood and stone, as well as seeds for your first crops. The game then introduces you to its crafting. As you pick up each new resource, you will see all the associated recipes unlock. And I really love the building in this game thanks to three main features. First is the ability to lay out the different parts of your farmstead without using any materials at all, since it places down these holograms. Second is the fact that recycling is free and returns all resources, so you can rearrange all of your stuff as you see fit. And thirdly, I never ran into an upper limit on inventory capacity, which enables picking up of literally everything you own for relocation if you wish to do so. On that last point, however, there is a penalty for exceeding a certain mass limit. Your run and jumping abilities will get disabled. But as long as you're able to walk where you want to go, you can still get there. However, later on, once you get the first upgrade to your run speed, this feels super slow, so I wouldn't recommend it. Unless you really need to do a big farming run. Crafting is super simple and straightforward. You can queue up resources to be made in the various machines, but this is oddly inconsistent. At least three of the machines just produce objects instantly and has no queue, and feels out of place with the way the rest of the game does things. As for proximity crafting fans, well I'm going to have to disappoint you, as for at the moment at least, this doesn't have it. But it's not that big of a deal here, and you shouldn't be making so much stuff that you really need it. The game world you'll be exploring is made up of 8 different areas of which only 7 are currently explorable, with what's behind that large wall to the north of the map being a mystery for now. That's right, it would appear that this world was once inhabited before we arrived. And judging by the ruins you find, it was a long time ago. But nonetheless, there are still a few artifacts scattered around each of the areas, except the starter one, which once they are all collected, will unlock information about that specific area. Getting some of these will be one of the only reasons that you get out of the mech, for a little bit of parkour puzzles as well as searching smaller areas. Something you will quickly find is that each area is overrun with strange plants or goo, or both in some cases but your trusty farming mech can help with dealing with these, although later areas will require an upgrade or two. Cleaning each area, as well as finding the artifacts, will unravel the mystery and story of Lightyear Frontier. Also, new resources and crops unlock with each cleaned up area, and this becomes your progression. Each area also has different critters that you can feed for a loot bonus, and each critter requires different food. The story feels to me both the most interesting and yet the weakest part of the game for me. It's just far too short and has left me wanting so much more from it. You could do it all in about 10 hours. But don't get me wrong, I definitely enjoyed the story so far, and I'm sure you will too, there's just not enough of it. It's also worth pointing out that finishing the current story doesn't mean the end of exploration, and you will find out why when you get there yourself. That's all I'm going to say on that one. It is also again an early access title, which means that there will be more coming over time in terms of story content, quality of life, mech and building parts. And I also have good reason to believe that the map will most likely expand as I spotted a volcano which definitely looks like a playable area, but it was off the current map. The voice acting was also pretty good from both Piper and the NPCs that you can talk to. Very early on, one of these will be a friendly space trainer, and she will sell you a whole bunch of stuff, but never anything you haven't unlocked when it comes to the farm. But her main purpose is bright, shiny new mech parts and blueprints for building cosmetics that you just can't get anywhere else. You can afford these by selling off your own crops that you may have overproduced for this reason, or you can sell any treasures that you might find along the way for even bigger bucks. Keeping a varied stock of crops is the name of the game as prices for both buying and selling do vary, so patience will help you get the best prices. 
As far as progression goes though, it feels well paced, each area adding just the right amount of new to farm and utilise. And at certain stages it can really feel like a big upgrade for your farmstead too, when you finally unlock just the right resources you need for new equipment. Be it no longer living in a tent, two bigger plots or even a barn to keep all your shiny new equipment in. This goes hand in hand with the strongest area of the game, the customization. You can paint near enough everything, mech included, and I've found about 15 different versions of the mech, and all these parts can be mixed and mashed and painted whichever colour you want. As for the farm itself, you can make this as huge or as small as you like. And there are so many decoration options, I couldn't unlock them all before needing to stop to write this review. The soundtrack is super relaxing with its Wild West Frontier vibes played out on acoustic guitar. Similar to what you find in both Hard Space Shipbreaker and a little bit of the Outer Wild soundtracks. And this fits with the game as there are no enemies to face, no time limits to compete with, just you, the planet and honest farm work. The only threats that you face are from the environment with the occasional event taking place upon waking up. It's either corrupted seeds falling from the sky or ooze bubbles rising up from the ground over your crops. Either way, leaving them both would be a bad time for your harvest, and they are not too hard to deal with, and they also net you a key resource, so are definitely worth dealing with. Now I can't really comment too much on the multiplayer side of things since this was a pre-release version I was playing and had no one to play with, but given how short the game was to just me, with four people farming, getting resources, building and cleaning areas, you might just be able to get everything done in a single long sitting. Or if it's really your gem, you could spend ages turning the whole island into an industrial sized farm. But the choice for that my friend, is yours. Performance wise, I had no crashes with my time in the game and only a few minor bugs which will most likely be sorted with a day one patch or not even noticed by most people, so it's definitely all good on this front. Which leads me to happily recommend this game. It's excellent for those who are short on time and enjoy shorter gaming sessions, as you can just hop in for a day or two in game, do your farming and then come back another time. But given its low amount of content, I would have to say it's not currently worth more than a $20 price point, especially when you have games like Pacific Drive or Enshrouded that have come out recently, which are packed with so much more at the $25 mark, providing more value in both content and replayability. But that's just my opinion. Either way, it still gets a thumbs up from me and I look forward to seeing much more from Lightyear Frontier in the future. Also shout out to the devs at Framebreak for supplying this review copy. Now if you enjoyed this, please like and sub for more sci-fi gaming content and I will see you guys in the next one. Kenator, out.